Hello, in this presentation we will talk about a new feature within QuickBooks Pro 2018, that being the Cache Accrual Toggle feature. That feature available in reports such as the balance sheet and the income statement where we can easily toggle back and forth between an accrual method or a cache method right on the face of the report without going into the customized section in order to do so. We'll take a look at what that means and a quick kind of description of what is the cache and accrual method and how would that be useful to us to be able to go back and forth between those two reports. Here is our data set within QuickBooks Pro 2018. We've got the profit and loss open for a current year, a time period or a time period. And what we have here, what we're looking at is this feature up top, the report basis switching back and forth from a cash to accrual basis. Now, when we look at this, you might think, well, why would I need to do that considering the fact that when we make reports, we want to be consistent. That's a financial standard that whatever we choose, whether it be cash or accrual, is something that we want to have consistent through that uh, reporting period. But, and that is true when we're reporting outside uh, for formal reporting, but it may be the case, whether we be on a cash or accrual basis, that we want to see the other format for internal reporting purposes, and that's when this could really be useful, or one area when this can really be useful. Remember what those differences are, it's just basically when we're going to be recognizing income and expenses. Do we recognize revenue and expenses at the point in time we have earned the revenue and incurred the expenses, or at the point in time we receive cash and make cash payments. So typically the accrual method is going to be the method that will be uh, generally accepted in terms of standards. But the cash method could give us a cash flow report that can be useful as well uh, without having to go basically to the cash flow statement. So it could we could have contexts even if we were using an accrual basis where a cash format uh, could be useful for us to use. If we take a look at the difference within this profit and loss, we can see what we have here. We got net loss of 754 on the default being the accrual basis. We've got the sales of 2675. If we switch over here to the cash basis, we will see some changes here. Uh, we now have two types uh, of revenue. We've got this un, uh, uncategorized revenue that bringing the total revenue up to total income of the 2218 and uh, some differences in the expenses that changing the net income. So there will be going to be differences within uh, these two methods. And it's useful to go through those. And if you were to double click on the accounts and drill down on the detail within the accounts, uh, you can also go through the cash and accrual in these particular accounts as well and see uh, what, what the difference is going to be there. So we're going to close out of this. If you do have older versions, note this was in older versions. If you go up to the customized reports feature, then you could go to this cash versus accrual in the display tab here. So really this is just making it a little bit faster for us to toggle back and forth between the cash and accrual system. It's really nice that once this data is within QuickBooks, QuickBooks can compile that data using either a cash method or an accrual method. It's worth noting too that when we look at uh, the accrual method, if we go to the home tab over here, the driving factor that's really going to usually be recording the sales is going to be the invoice. So when we look at the at the profit and loss, going back to the home back to the profit and loss under the accrual, and we'll take a look at the merchandise, then uh, the driving factor is the invoice and the sales receipts, as opposed to of course if we're on a cash basis, the driving factor is going to be the point in time that we received cash on the cash basis. We're going to close this back out. On the expense side, if we were to go back to the home tab, the driving factor will typically be when we enter a bill or if we wrote a, a check directly. Uh, those are going to be the forms that are going to be really the driving factors on an accrual basis to trigger when uh, the expenses are often going to be recognized. And so it's useful to be able to, to note that. Remember the rule is going to be that we recognize revenue when it has been earned. When we look at the software, the software just from a technical logistical standpoint needs to record it at some point in time. That's usually the point of the invoice for the software. Typically that's going to be closer to the point in time that it, it was earned. It is possible, however, that the invoice goes out at a later date and we have to make 
an adjustment for that and typically on the expense side the form that's going to drive is when we enter uh, the bills that's going to be the form that drives when the expense goes in if we're entering a bill for uh, an expense and not basically the check time and the time of payment.